Now we're gonna go ahead and clean the shafts real quick. I'm just gonna show you how I do one arrow. There's no reason to see me do all 12. That's pretty boring. It would create a long video and trying to keep this one shorter than the first one. The reason you wanna clean these is because you get all this carbon dust in there from the cutting process or from squaring it. And you wanna clean that out so that the glue has something to adhere to. So what I like to do is I will take the insert end here and I like to rough up the inside a little bit. It gives the glue a little bit more uh, adhesion abilities there. So I just take a brush, a wire brush for my gun cleaning kit and just kind of get it all scraped up in there and it'll clean out any other dirt as well. And I'll take a Q-tip and some isopropyl alcohol and dip it in that. And then I will just run that on the inside to clean out all that carbon dust as well as on the edge. And so you can see that came back kind of dirty. So then I'll take the other side, the dry side and clean that up and get it dried out. You don't really need to do it on the knock side, but I like to keep it kind of clean. So I just use the same Q-tip and try and clean it out a little bit. So that's how I clean all my arrows as well as prep them for the gluing process. So if you wanted to, you can go ahead and put your knock into your arrow. One tip that I have for the knocks is they're pretty tight. So I take a little bit of boning wax here for the strings and I get a little bit of wax here around the edge and that'll make this slide in and out easier. So one thing I didn't do in this video was I didn't spine align these, but that's because these Victory V-Force arrows come already spine aligned. It's got a mark here showing you that it is aligned and I did test it with my tester and it seems to be pretty accurate. So I'm not gonna go through that process, but we will get the knock in there and line it up such that it lines up with the spine. So that's in there. So the next what I do is put the fletching on. And the reason I'm doing this is just to get it out of the way. I don't want to lose which fletching goes with which arrow. Um, so I'm not really putting it anywhere specific. Now we want to go ahead and insert tune this arrow. So to do this, you're gonna take your insert and I got this spinner online for like 20 bucks. Series Archery actually is a cool spinner that they just came out with that people love. Um, this works just fine, so this is what I'm going to keep using. But to insert tune, you wanna go ahead and stick your insert in your shaft. And you really want to use the broadhead that you plan on using for this specific arrow. So in this case, I have a Magnus Black Hornet here. I like these broadheads a lot. So if you haven't checked them out, you should check them out and look into using them. So we're going to go ahead and put that in the insert. And then what you're looking for is you're going to spin your arrow and you may turn the insert a quarter of the way each time and you're just trying to find where that insert spins best with this broadhead. So we'll go ahead and spin some. So it actually spins pretty good there. Another technique you can use is I sometimes will put a block up here. Get a little sharpie. And I'll put a dot right where that lines up. And I did this in my uh, 
video where I insert tuned last year as well in a little bit more detail so you can go look at that one if you're interested but basically I spin it and I just try and make sure that it's staying on that dot I made if it starts kind of spinning around the dot awkwardly then you may want to turn it and make sure it's insert tuned correctly the tip of the arrow lines up perfectly with that dot and you're just going to spin it and you want it to stay right on that dot if it moves around the dot then what I would do is I would turn your insert some about a quarter of the way until you get it to spin perfectly and then once you've done that what I like to do is I take a sharpie and I will draw a line from the insert to the shaft and what that does is it'll show you when you go to glue it where to line up your insert so now that we've done that we can go ahead and get ready to glue this arrow like I mentioned before I'm using the boning cool fletch here this is some hot melt this is the first time I've really used it so bear with me as I test this out and I may do an update later and talk about whether I like this or epoxy better I just like the idea of being able to remove your inserts and reuse them or being able to reuse your arrow shafts as well the one suggestion I have is if you do have the Ranch Ferry uh, test kit you take one of your long uh, field tips and you go ahead and screw that into your insert it just gives you a little bit more room to hold on to the insert while you apply the hot melt using heat you want to be really careful not to heat up the carbon because that'll destroy the properties in it and cause your arrow to be a lot more brittle so what you're going to want to do is you can either directly heat your insert or heat up the hot melt itself and you're just going to rub some of the hot melt on there and as you can see here on this insert it has these little glue grooves here you want to make sure you get some glue there and then you want to get some glue down here as well and along the edge just to make sure it's glued all the way in so we'll go ahead and do that And so this stuff actually seems to dry pretty quickly. So you want to make sure you get your glue on there. If it dries on your insert, that's not a big deal. You can just reheat your insert before you put it in. So I am going to heat this back up. And we are going to insert that into the arrow shaft. And I like to twist as I go. I think that helps distribute all of the glue. And then you want to make sure you line up your insert with your mark on your shaft. If it does start to dry on you a little quicker than you would like, you can reheat either your field tip to try and distribute the heat down or do not put direct heat on the carbon but just kind of hold it under it and then you can just take your towel here and wipe off the excess and you should be good to go that's how I build my arrows I'm gonna go ahead and do the remainder of these arrows I like putting the fletchings on so I don't lose them obviously when I go to bear shaft I will pull those off but for now they are gonna stay on All right, guys, thanks for joining me in today's video. We watched how I built these arrows, how I insert tuned them. Last year, I did some knock tuning, but this year, because I have these Victory V-Force arrows that are spine aligned, it tells you exactly where the knock should go. 
and I actually tested it out and I'll show you a little video of that here but I tested it out it seems to be pretty dang accurate and I noticed when I knock tuned last year that if I got it spine lined correctly I really didn't have to move my knock much if I run into any issues in tuning maybe that's what I'll try first but at this point I really don't think I need to knock tune with these arrows so I weighed these and I will be right around the 550 grain mark. I haven't tested FOC yet because I don't know exactly where I want to put my fletching on this. I'm still going to do some tuning on that end. But what I've gone ahead and done is I've labeled all my arrows 1 through 12 and I have all my fletchings off here that are also labeled 1 through 12. That way I can get a consistent weight across all of them. And when I'm done, I'll show you the weights for every single arrow as well so you can see where I stand on that. Again, this year I do plan on using the Magnus Broadheads. I shot my first hog with the Black Hornet and it shot really well and I was pretty happy with it. I'm still testing out the Magnus Stinger buzz cut as well. Hopefully try and take my next hog with that one and see how well I like that. But either way, I, I feel like I'm going to be sticking with these Magnus Broadheads because I'm a big fan of them. I hope you all enjoyed this video. Hopefully it was a little bit shorter than part one. In part three, I will go ahead and shoot all these through paper. If I need to do a little knock tuning, I'll go ahead and do that. Otherwise, I may make some minor adjustments with my rest. I'll show you some of the other things I do during my tuning process to make sure that I have perfect arrow flight. If you have any questions on this process or how I built these arrows or any of the components I use, Feel free to leave a comment below. If you enjoyed this video, I really appreciate y'all's support. Hit that thumbs up button and subscribe. Thanks for watching, guys.